Now this is the part two of the review. Um, a particle moves along the x-axis so that at any time t its acceleration is given by a sub t is just the natural log of 1 plus t. We've been asked to determine the velocity of the particle. If the velocity of the particle is 2 meters per second, there should be units there. At t equal to 1 second, there should be units here. Then the velocity of the particle at t equals to 2 seconds, there should be units there is. We know that, um, that a is equal to dv dt, which means that delta v is the integral of a dt from t equal t initial to t final. So v minus 2 is the integral from t equal to 1 to t equal to 2 the natural log of 1 plus t dt. Now I'm going to give you guys a formula sheet so that you should be able to integrate functions like this. If you use integration by parts, yeah, it will give you that um, earlier, but the answer is not among here. So we'll move on. Will we have stuff about the test? No, there is none. Oh, there is none. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So 26. A solid stone is dropped from rice at a height h on the planet Mars. Suppose it takes time t to fall, and the acceleration due to gravity on Mars is one third that on Earth. Determine the height from which the same should be dropped on Earth so that should be dropped on Earth so that it reach the ground on the same time. First of all, we know that H is equal to one half G T squared. Now the height on Mars is the same as the height on Earth, right? Yes. This would mean that one half Mars T squared is gonna be equal to one half Earth T squared. The halves can take care of each other. And uh, this is M, that is E. Then we are gonna have T E squared will be equal to gm over g earth multiplied by tm squared, right? Now the question says that um, we need to calculate the amount of time. Now we need to determine the height from which um, it will be dropped. Determine the height, not the time. Now if we are to determine the height, not the time, this is what we are going to do. This is all important, so I'm going to erase this. We have to determine the height. Not the time, so we have... H of Mars will be equal to one half G of Mars capital T squared. H of Earth is equal to one half G of Earth. Remember the time is the same, right? So this would be T squared. And the question is, what will be this height h of e so that the time should be the same so what do you think we should do here pardon
What would be the rationale for you to do that? So wait, no. We know that um, if we just leave this as small t, small t, for tm squared to be equal to t earth squared, remember that t squared is equal to 2h all divided by g. We are going to have here 2hm over gm. This will be equal to 2h of earth over what? g's of earth. The twos can take care of each other. And uh, you are going to have he to be equal to ge over gm multiplied by hm, right? We know the gravitational field of Mars in terms of the gravitational fields on Earth. And uh, this will be equal to g bracket one third g multiplied by h. Um, the g's can go away and the 3 goes up and th that will be 3h. Is that clear? So the choice is C. Wait. No, you're looking for it. The determine yes. Mars. Determine the height from which... It should have to be lower on Earth than on Mars. Determine the height from which... Oh, and the same amount of higher on Mars. Yeah, no, no, it should be higher. It should be higher. It's going to go slower mm -hmm. on, on, on Mars than there, so it should be higher on Earth. But do you understand the algebra? Wait, it should be higher on Mars? Yeah. No, higher on Earth. Because it doesn't matter how high it is, it's the same time, right? It's going to go slower on Mars than it does on Earth. Remember, it goes, the gravitational field of Mars is small, so the acceleration due to gravity on Mars is small. Therefore, for you to drop something on Earth to take the same time to fall on Earth as in Mars, the distance on Earth has to be higher. In, uh, and clearly, it here it shows three times as high. And by logic, you, in, in an exam, for me, I don't have to go through this necessary mathematics to get there. The gravitational field strain of Mars is one third. Therefore, the distance should be three times. Simple proportion. Um, the next question. We have x equal to 20 plus 5t minus 8t squared. What is the average velocity of the particle during the time interval? So what do we do here? This is a simple question. The average velocity is just a change in x divided by a change in time. So fit in, fit in the, the numbers into the expression and calculate the distance, right? So that would be equal to what? Um, 35. The answer is this so it's just going to be equal to 20 plus 5 this is 4 minus 8 4 squared all minus bracket 20 plus 5 4 minus 8 4 squared and all of these divided by the time interval which is 4 minus 1 seconds this should be 1 here sorry and it should be 1 here if you do the computation you end up with um, about 35 we have x equal to 24t minus 4t squared this would mean that v is equal to 24 minus 8t. So when the object comes to rest, v is 0. 
This would mean that T will be 24 divided by 8, and that should be equal to what? Three. Pardon? Three. Three seconds. Now we've been asked to determine the magnitude of the acceleration at the instant when the velocity is zero. This is the time the velocity is zero, but A sub T basically is going to be equal to minus 8 meters per square seconds. And uh, the answer is not a month. Actually, there's a typo here. This is 3. Yeah. That, then your answer will be a month. Um, <clears throat> the next question, 29, we're almost there, says that a car starts moving along a straight horizontal road with a constant acceleration increases its velocity from 40 meters per second to 80 meters per second in a distance of 200 meters determine the acceleration of the car we will use v squared equal to v naught squared plus 2a delta x which would mean that a is equal to v squared minus v naught squared all divided by delta x and that would be 80 squared minus 40 squared divided by uh, this should be 2, right? Yeah. 2 multiplied by 200. And can you do the computation for me, please? Twelve meters per second squared. Wait, is this notation like meter divided by second divided by second? Is that like accurate? Yeah. Wouldn't that be just like second divided by second and then that other one would go up? No. No, it's mere second is times one over a second. So you get the last second divide the whole. You get meters per second. Squared. <laughs> yeah. A stone is thrown vertically upwards from the ground such that its velocity, it has a velocity of 25 meters when the stone is one third from its maximum height. When the stone is one third from its maximum height. So if this is the ground, Therefore, when the stone is two-thirds h, the velocity of the stone is 25 meters per second. We need to calculate the maximum height. It's one-third from its maximum height. You understand that, right? So um, this would mean that when the stone is two-thirds h above the ground, we know the velocity of the stone then can we calculate the velocity at maximum height? V find our uh, velocity at maximum height is zero. Mm -hmm. That will be equal to 25 square minus two multiplied by 10 bracket max H minus two third H. This would mean that uh, 25 squared we are going to have here 20 divided by 3 h all of this should be equal to what is 25 squared? 625 pardon? 625 no. 25 squared mm. yeah. yeah it should be 625 so what is H? H so H is 625 multiplied by 3 divided by 20. And what will be the answer? 
Pardon? 96. 96 meters. The velocity of a particle moving along the x-axis as a function of time. So the answer actually is 9 to 6 when you use 9.8 rather. Yeah. Okay. Because this is not true. Yeah, I mean, like, I feel like with all of the, the ones that are not answerable is because 9.8 instead of 10. Alright, the question is we need to calculate the expression for distance. Delta x is just the integral from 0 to t of v dt, which is the integral from 0 to t um, of v naught dt divided by 1 plus k v naught t and therefore delta x will be we can this will be v naught divided by k v naught the natural log of 1 plus kvt from 0 to t and that is equal to 1 over k the natural log of 1 plus k v naught t remember the natural log of 1 is 0 so the answer here should be b okay, so there's a formula for this right b yeah. Look at this graph here. There, if, if you draw a straight line here, you will realize that this straight line is parallel to this line, isn't it? Are you seeing are you are you with me? Yeah. If you draw a straight line here, you will realize that this straight line is parallel. Wait, sorry, with the previous problem, which answer did you say was correct? B. B. Oh, okay. I thought you said B. The graph below shows the position as a function of time for two cars moving on parallel tracks on the same road. Which of the following statement is or are true? At t equal to t b, both cars have the same velocity. That is not true because at this particular time, their slopes are different, which means their velocities are different. Car A speeds up continually. That is not true. Car A moves to the constant word velocity and then slows down. Um, both cars speed up at all times. Not true. Both cars have the same velocity at some time before TB, which is true. At some time, right here, both cars, the, the slopes are parallel to each other. And uh, equal. So 
So my choice is D. A boy is standing at the edge of a tall tower, simultaneously throws two stones, one straight up and a B straight down, while with the same speed, neglecting air resistance, the ball hit the ground below the tower with the ball to hit the ground below the tower with greater speed is the one initially thrown is the one initially thrown it should be upwards downwards both and so on and so forth but is it ball a is the one he threw up because it had a greater height to develop it's so it's c because it's the same velocity yeah, when it both ball on, both ball hits the, the ground with the same speed y because when the ball goes up and comes down, at this junction, it has the same velocity up, down, as it had up, right? So it starts off with the same velocity and it goes down. Do you understand that? Oh, he throws the ball down. Mm -hmm. I thought he just dropped the ball. No, he throws the ball down. I probably did this one. If you look at it from... Two blocks of equal masses slide from rest down to inclined planes that are equal of equal height and are inclined at different angles with respect to the horizontal, ignoring friction at height h above the ground. Which block has the greater speed? At height h above the ground, which block has the greater speed? Now, there is no friction. Keep that in mind. There is no friction. The height of block A at this point and the height of block B are the same above the ground. Is the speed of A the same as the speed of B? So the height, the speed of A will be equal to the speed of B. That, that is actually my choice. If you look at this graph, the spacing is increasing here. The spacing is constant. And here the spacing is decreasing. So the graph initially accelerates, moves to the constant velocity and what? Decelerates. So this will be it, and this will be it. Though this graph is supposed to be like a smooth rise, like that. You understand that, right? Um, so the best answer here will be A. Will be A. Let me stop this 